Remember Australia's mass shooting of camels at the start of 2020? That must have shocked you to the core, right? Then, what if I told you the true story of the war they waged on Emus way back in 1932? That's right, the Aussies literally took up arms against the birds on their own coat of arms. And in today's video, we'll explore the exciting details of how the Australian army started the Great MU Wars and ended up getting schooled instead. Before we dive into the wild details of this MU uprising, let's talk national birds. Basically, every country picks a bird to represent them, right? Something that captures the spirit of the place or feels iconic. Take India, for example. Their national bird is the peacock. With those vibrant colors and fancy feathers, it captures India's beauty. Peacocks are also protected there. America's is the bald eagle. Nothing screams patriotism and freedom like that bird soaring high. Bald eagles are protected on U.S. soil too. Now, the national bird of Australia is the emu, and it is most certainly not protected, as we're all about to find out. Now, let me give you a quick backdrop before we dive into emu war action. After World War I wrapped up, the Aussie government gave tons of land to returning soldiers and British vets, hoping they'd farm it. Things were going well, until the Great Depression hit in 1929. All of a sudden, these farmers were struggling hard, and it makes sense. The government promised to support wheat production, but then bailed, which wasn't cool at all. Now, around this time, a huge flock of about 30,000 EMUs had just finished breeding season on the coast. These birds were migrating inland like usual. And let me tell you, the timing couldn't have been worse. The outback they knew was now overrun with crops. Delicious, delicious crops. So the emus tore through fences like they were nothing. Rabbits then swooped in to munch whatever the emus missed. The farmers were pissed. After all, their livelihoods were in tatters. So in a last-ditch effort, they turned to the one government group they trusted, the Ministry of Defense. The Aussie Minister of Defense at the time was Sir George Pierce, a well-loved legend in the farming community. When the farmers came to him saying they needed the army's machine guns to cull the emus, Pierce was all for it. He laid out the rules of engagement. The soldiers would handle all the weapons and soldiering paid for by the farmers, and the farmers would provide food and shelter for the troops. Pierce also thought it'd be great target practice for the machine gunners. Parliament backed it too, seeing it as a way to support struggling farmers. They even brought in a propaganda film crew from Fox Movie Tone to document the triumphant operation. So with full government approval, they assembled their very own Expendables-esque squad to carry out the war's combat operations. Then, it was finally time for these EMU hordes to feel the heat. In early October 1932, three elite soldiers signed up for the mission. Leading the charge was Major GPW Meredith, a decorated World War I vet with combat chops. Then, there was Sergeant S. McMurray and Gunner J. O'Halloran, packing serious heat with Lewis machine guns and 10K rounds of ammo each. But even these badasses faced delays. Massive downpours held them up for a whole month. But November 2nd, 1932, was the day when things got started. With our Australian soldiers and EMUs set to throw down, it was showtime. They rolled up to Campion, hearing rumors of 50 EMUs nearby. But these birds weren't just going to stand around. They were too far for the machine guns, so locals tried herding them into an ambush for our troops, which was a big mistake. Because what some people just don't realize is Emus are super tough to hit. I know they're huge, like over 6.5 feet tall, but these monsters can run at about 30 miles per hour. The emus knew it too. So when the ambush went down at the Battle of Campion, the emus just sprinted in all directions. No way our guys could get a clear shot now. They may have taken out a few, maybe a dozen, but most of the emu hordes skated away unscathed. And just like that, the emus went up 1-0 in the first round. On November 4th, things were about to get real. Meredith and the boys tracked a massive flock of over 1,000 emus to a nearby dam. This time, they busted out maximum stealth to sneak up close before unleashing the fury. And it worked. The surprise attack was paying off, or, well, almost, until one machine gun jammed after only a dozen kills. Yikes. The rest of the emus wisely vamoosed while they could and Meredith quickly learned the emus could easily survive a single bullet wound and run away before receiving another. So, despite the heavy shooting, no more emus were spotted or attacked on that day. And thus, the dinosaur birds went 2-0 up. These emus were showing no signs of backing down. So, Meredith and the troops pushed south, chasing some fairly tame birds, or so they thought. Turns out their success was very limited. More surprisingly, by the fourth day, they noticed the emus had their own leaders coordinating attacks. Unbelievable, isn't it? The leader emu kept watch while his mates continued to tear stuff up. Then, realizing the emu's speed was their superpower, Meredith mounted a machine gun to a truck, hoping the driver could chase them down. But out in the rocky terrain, they couldn't fire a single shot on target, losing all of their shots entirely. 
So, the final score was incredible at its best. Emus 3, Australia 0. By November 8th, just six days after things kicked off, Parliament was reviewing how it all went down. With the film crew capturing it all, plus reports they only bagged 50 birds while blasting through over 2,500 rounds, the Aussie defense minister had no choice but to pull the plug on military involvement. Even Meredith had to admit defeat, saying if the EMUs formed an official platoon, no other army could stop them. So, the war was over, or so it seemed. After officially calling off the battle, the farmers were mad that the EMUs kept chomping their crops, and with hot weather pushing the remaining 19 to 20k birds further inland, the government redeclared war. Meredith and the boys were back for round two, and this time they started seeing some wins, dropping about 100 EMUs each week. But even after blasting over 10k rounds for under 1,000 confirmed kills, Meredith was tapped out on December 10th. He claimed more died from injuries later, and the mission was called a success. Or was it? You don't need a calculator to see those kill numbers were whack. Even if we take they killed 4,000 EMUs at most, there were still over 25,000 EMUs causing mayhem. True, the government did try bounties with some luck, but when it came down to it, the EMUs actually won the war. So how did those struggling farmers bounce back with emus on the rampage? Well, they just switched to chain-link fences instead of wood. I'm serious. That simple fence upgrade is what finally stopped the emu assault of 1932. Crazy to think something so small ended the Great Emu War. It just leaves you wondering why they didn't do it any sooner. So let us know in the comments what you think about this crazy emu war. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, press the bell icon for instant notifications so that you never miss a video from Factastic Trivia.